Hello, everyone. Welcome to the long-awaited perspective uh, demo. Um, again, this is one of the more challenging skills that you will learn in design. Uh, so don't get frustrated. Know that you will uh, have a few opportunities to tackle perspective. And it's not a, a tool that's commonly used in offices anymore. So it's just a good foundational skill. And some people who are really into it and like it, they kind of become the perspective person in the office. Um, there are a number of ways to do perspective. What I have chosen is this 12-step method. So you'll see this in the folder tonight. Um, this was actually developed by one of my old teachers. It's kind of a combination of the long formal perspective method that takes six or eight hours in my experience and the very short office method perspective, which um, is shown in your Cal Poly graphics book, kind of walks you through that office method. Um, the challenge with the office method is I don't find it all that accurate. And then the other one is very accurate, but it, it just takes so many hours. So this kind of combines a little bit of both of those. And I found this one to give me about the right level of accuracy and be reasonable as well as time uh, crunching. So we're going to start with this and we'll see. I'm going to go, you know, we'll see how far we get through it. We might break this into two pieces to make it more manageable. So um, I don't have an 11 by 17 printer at home, so I basically printed this in two pieces. Usually most printers have a setting that says print the window, so you can enlarge it to 100% and then um, kind of pan over to one side and then the other side and then tape it together if you're someone who likes to have things in front of you on paper. So first of all, we want to take our plan, and you've been provided a plan in your um, folder too, and we're going to rotate it whatever direction we want, and we're going to tape it to Tish. So when you tape it, you're not going to tape it down to the table. You're going to tape it using kind of loops so you can kind of freely move that around. And now I've picked out a piece of Tish, and you'll notice it's quite long. And that's because this tends to get very long and drags down. So um, try to keep it on the long side. Um, if you run out of room, you can always, you know, attach another piece of pitch at the bottom. So I'm basically just attaching my plan to the top of my pitch loosely. I have this tape up here. And and then, so now I have kind of a, a free assembly here. And I'm going to slide this up into the top of the camera of the frame. Hopefully, you guys can see the whole shenanigan palette of things going on here. Okay, and step one, I'm actually going to move this a little bit closer is we want to take our plan and create a, a grid from it. So I am going to start, I'm using my little rolling edge here, but you could use your parallel edge if you had one. And I'm just going to trace the outside of this frame of landscape. Um, if I had a big long plane and I just wanted to do a perspective on a part of it, this is how I would kind of narrow that down. A little bit. It's a little bit more even. Trouble with these rolling things is they don't always stay parallel. Right. This one. So this, I already have a nice boundary on this particular one, so that makes it easier. But again, if you had a big 24 by 36 sheet and you just wanted to show this one garden space, that's kind of how you would define your area as you would place a frame around it. And then I'm going to place a giant X through this going from corner to corner. Just like that. So you should have this giant X through your space. And then we can use the X 
to divide this into smaller squares. So now I want to be pretty careful with my rolling slide here. And I want to divide this into four spaces. Four. We're going from one giant square to four squares. Now we've got one, two, three, four squares, and then I'm going to make each of those into axes too. And just going from corner to corner. Now I'm going to divide those X's again, try and keep it straight. Same the other way. And then I can finish off by creating X's through all of these grids. I really end up with four rows of rectangles, um, both vertically and horizontally. Okay, so we've got our grid all set up. I'm going to slide that paper back towards the top. And so now we move over to step three. And on step three, we want to set what's called our cone of vision and our station point. And we do that by at about the center line, bringing it down and setting up about a 60 degree cone of vision. Now you can see on the handout, some people can take their fingers and make 60 degrees. My fingers do not open that much, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, so I'm going to kind of eyeball this about center, just kind of try to keep keep where center is. And I've got my 30, 60 degree, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So 30 degrees at the point, 90 degrees at the big. Um, main angle and then this would be 60 degrees so i just i really want to set this kind of centered um so you know kind of at, at below the center of my drawing close to it's not it doesn't have to be perfect and i want to pull it in so that i can kind of capture the edges of this um, I'm going to try and be efficient and not pull this too far down because I also know that this, this is where it can get kind of long is if we start to pull things down. I'm going to just kind of set my cone of vision here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just know my fingers do not open to 60 degrees. So it just, that, that little quick trip doesn't work for me. So there I have my cone of vision and where these lines meet at the bottom, this is what's called my station point. And so we want to make sure that my altitude is going to be okay. So we want to make sure that our distance between the station point 
and the nearest object is at least twice the height of the station point. So I have a 20 foot high tree, I'm an eight scale. So I'm gonna go to my eight scale. And I need this to be at least 40 feet. So I'm well over 40 feet on mine, but that's kind of a, a double check to make sure this works. Is right now I'm at kind of a tall item in my foreground. I want this, this edge, this station point to be at least two times as tall as that is away. So this is a 20 foot high tree. This needs to be at least 40 feet and it's above, it's more than 40 feet. So I'm good there. Then we move over to number four. So now we're gonna draw a line through the outer edge of this and kind of extend this out. This is called our picture plane. And this is an important line because our picture plane is the only space on our drawing that actually we can measure, that we could hold, that's the only thing that's gonna to be to scale once we're in perspective. So this is kind of an important plane. It'd be like if you were taking a plate of glass and looking through it at a landscape beyond. That's really what this picture plane is, right? We've got that drawn in, that's part of step four. And then below the plan, we're gonna draw a parallel line to this picture plane, and we're going to, um, name that the horizon line. I'm just gonna roll this up here. Okay. So I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna bring it a little bit below my station point because I'm running out of space. And I'm gonna try and line this up very closely. I'm gonna take my rolling glide, bring that straight down, and I'm gonna draw my parallel line here. I'm gonna extend it out a little bit. So I've got my two parallel lines, right? Um, and now I'm gonna bring down the edges where my cone of vision hit the picture plane. I'm going to bring those lines directly down. And I'm most concerned about these two points here. Because now I'm going to use those points and I'm gonna create um, uh, uh, kind of use that to be a rectangle. Okay, so I'm gonna put this under this line. So, We have 12 and just about an eighth of an inch on mine. Yours might be slightly different. It's okay that it is. And so I'm gonna create a rectangle. So I'm gonna measure. Let's try that again. 
I'm going to measure with my school ruler, um, and I'm going to measure this actually at eight and three quarters of an inch. You could measure in scale or not. I would say just pick the right scale, which not like I did. Um, so I'm eight and three quarters of an inch. So half that way is four and three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go four and three eighths of an inch above. And below. Four and three eighths of an inch above. And below. Just going to double check my measurement. Yep. So now I have a perfect for, uh, equal, equal. Right? So it would be this piece is equal to this piece. This piece is equal to this piece, right? This length, we want this to be a perfect kind of a square. Now I'm going to draw that in. Create my square. This. Right, these two, if you added them together, they're the same as this one. And then this station point becomes, this is now my horizon line, and this station point becomes my vanishing point. So I can bring this straight down. Right there is my vanishing point. We are right here on step six. Again, creating uh, step five is creating the rectangle. Step six is bringing that vanishing point straight down. So now I, I can establish the elevation of my grid. So. I could do my elevation from what's called the worm's eye view, which is very close to the ground. I could do it at human eye view, which is what we consider five feet high. That's what most, if you measured most people, the average height, it would be, if you measured to their eyeball, it'd be five feet. Or we could have a bird's eye view where we're looking down onto the space from above. I found that when we view it from above, sometimes we can um, get get a little more detail in the drawing and it opens up the grid a little bit, makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to set um, our perspective at a bird's eye view. <clears throat> so we've got our horizon line. So let's say our tallest tree is 20 feet. So let's go 25 feet. We're going to measure based on our um, eighth inch scale, which is what this is drawn at. And we're going to come down below this line, below this horizon line, 25 feet. More 25. Okay. Let me make a couple other. Uh, so I can draw a line. I've got some guidelines in there. And everything in perspective, if we're doing what's called a one point perspective, is going to ultimately go back to this, um, this vanishing point. So 
we're going to draw our edge of our our plane that we're going to use to draw this perspective. This would be basically taking that picture plane and bringing it down into perspective. We're going to draw the line here. Again, that's 25 feet in the air, 25 feet below, because we're going to do a bird's eye perspective. And we know that this is going to ultimately come back to vanishing point. I'm going to go ahead and extend this out to the edge just so that it minimizes confusion. All right. And I'm going to lightly kind of bring this corner back to my vanishing point. Just kind of defining the edge. It's a real light grid line. We're not going to use those all that much. Okay. Now we've got to find the back edge of our grid. So we do that by bringing down, we're going to carry the outer points of our planned grid towards the station point until they intersect at the picture plane. So the way that we do that, we've got our station point here, right? We're going to take it from the corner of our plan, and we're going to angle it at the station point. And then this particular plan, it looks like it's going to hit right about right here, right about where that line comes. All right. So we can carry that. We can carry that line down. I'm actually going to do that in red. Doesn't get confused with the other line. Bring that straight down, just to the edge of that plane, and then do it on the other side. Again, I'm pointing at the station point, but on this particular drawing, it seems like it kind of fits right in, right about in here. Not real dark, but you hopefully can see that in red. There you go. A little bit better. And that point where it intersects the picture plane, that's what we want to bring down so we can finish out the back side of our grid. Bring this straight down. Keeping kind of an alignment with where it's hitting. All right, so. Down, the long way down. All right, right there. It, see how I'm carrying where that line hits all the way straight down to this um, angle back into the viewport? That going to kind of create our grid in perspective. Okay, so each side I've got a tick. Again, from that corner angled toward the station, station point, wherever it intersects the picture plane, that's where we want to stop and carry it straight down. So now we have the information to draw the back side of our grid. Okay, we've got our grid. It's all opened up. We've got our angles in. Well, not I wouldn't say it's our grid, but we have our outside edge. So now we have this tilted plane. This rect well, it's more of a, uh, I 
you call it? It's a tilted rectangle, right? It's a, a polygon. Um, is actually the outside of this frame of our space in perspective. Everything is going back and vanishing to this vanishing point. So that's the area that we get to concentrate now on. So now we have our grid, we need to draw our square, just like we did up above. And we can do this kind of not by think overthinking it, um, but we're going to just go from corner to corner and follow the same process we did up above with this lower one. Okay, corner to corner. So we're making the same X's, like we just like we did up above, but now we've got this kind of skewed perspective rectangle or square. All right, so I start by putting the main X through it, and then I want to find the center point. And I can use my station point and my viewport as a guide. All right, so now I've divided it into two rectangles. I want from side to side, it's not skewed in perspective, only when we go kind of front to back. So I want to stay parallel with this one. And I can run my line there. So now we've got our four squares correct, and we can finish out the X's through each square to divide them. Okay. dark. All right. So now we've got our four squares with X's through them. We're going to divide them again. Again, as we're going from uh, in this direction, we always use that, that viewpoint to kind of find our um, vanishing point, our center. So it's going to have a little bit of an angle through these squares. All right, so now we've got our four columns, or we will shortly. Again, using my vanishing point in this direction. All right, so I've got lined up here, there's right through my square. So now I've got I've got four rows this way in perspective. And then as I go from side to side, we're not in perspective, we're parallel. So now I'm just going to divide these spaces up. Right through here. Okay. And I can finish out my grid by going corner to corner. Right. Your corner. This is just going to help me be able to plot the items above and down here. And that's why we do this. And is running out of ink. My pen is just not catching there. Same thing here. Some of these lines in. 
I can keep going with all of them. Create my entire grid. I have above. And now you have a grid in perspective. So you can see that we've taken this drawing or this grid that we superimposed on our space. Right? And through our series of steps, we have created this kind of skewed grid in perspective that matches what's above. Okay, now we're ready to start mapping out what's above down on this grid. So if you're nervous about it, you can start in pencil. Um, otherwise, you can go right into pen. Um, so we're going, you know, we've kind of completed up through 7E. Now we've got our grid and we're on step eight. And we're going to use our grid to transfer the locations of hillsides, stream beds, and contours onto our grid. So we don't have any elevation um, increases. We do have a little elevation increase just with the water line of this pool. We've got a little structure that may or may not get hidden by the tree. We'll see as we, we draw it out. Got a nice open grid, but we can start mapping the areas in plan onto this uh, below. So if I start with this little patio feature, I can see that it is on the kind of almost doesn't quite come up to the full grid here, right? It's like almost to that uh, middle of that square. Um, and it kind of comes almost to this edge, crosses this, and it comes back. When we're drawing this, this uh, parallel edge, that is not in perspective. When we draw the edges that go front to back, those edges are in perspective. So I'm, I'm actually going to use a darker pen so you guys can see it better. So if I'm drawing this little patio, slab of patio that's in the forefront, I am estimating that it takes up most of this square, just cuts a little bit shy here, doesn't come quite to the center and it runs a little bit into this square. So I've got my back edge of it, and now I'm going to use my viewpoint, view vanishing point, to draw the edges that go front to back, because those are gonna be skewed by that vanishing point. Again, this is how our brain sees things in the real world. So there's my little section of a uh, patio. Now I've got this tree right here. What I really want to do first is I want to just um, set the center of the tree. And I can see I've got this whole square right here. And this tree center is pretty much on the outside, kind of right about in there. So I'm just going to put a dot where that tree is for now. I'm going to do the same for these trees. So this is a 20 foot high tree, these are 15 foot high trees. I'm just gonna locate the center of each of these trees. So I can see, oops, miss the line there, miss the line. So a little bit easier. I can see that one is gonna be about all right, in here, I've got one about in here. And I'm just matching up the grid on the top. I'm looking at the location one. So you can see in the second square, I've got one towards the front and one towards the back, and I can place them approximately. And then I have one in the third square that's about right here. And those are 15 foot high kind of small trees. Same over here. I have one that falls right about in the middle of that. I don't quite have my X over here. I'm just going to drop that in though. I've got one that is just behind the middle over here. Like that. 
And I have these eight foot high screening shrubs on the back. So I've got, so I've got one right here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Just putting some dots. I'm not going to worry about the gazebo at the moment. I'm not going to worry about the pool at the moment. I'm going to start with this 20 foot high tree. And I can see if I measure from my horizon line, what this guy is, we should label it horizon line, to where that tree is located, it's got 20 feet. So this tree is going to touch the top of that horizon line. And that's kind of in the front. So I like to work from the front of the drawing back because you can see it's going to be blocking some of these shrubs behind me. All right, so there's my little main big tree right in front. Now these trees are 15 feet high. remember how to do this. So I'm going to start over here because I remember how to do this one. We're at 15 feet high here. So we have maybe this is more of a round tree. Over here. And then same thing with this one. Um, this tree is going to, the top of it is going to touch the, her, the horizon line. So once I figure out where one is, I can work on placing the second one behind it. The other way to do this, that's kind of the older fashioned way, is we talked about how this is actually the only spot on this front edge where you can measure. So you can create a little ruler for yourself. If I'm at a quarter of an inch here, or eighth of an inch, sorry, um, I can create a little ruler right along this edge, 15, 20. This is four, eight, 12, 16, 20 feet high, which is my highest edge. That's the only place where I can really measure directly back. So if I'm gonna take, you know, for an example, if I take this 20 foot line and I go back to the vanishing point that's where we end up with something that's 20 feet high. So if I want something 15 feet high, I can take that line back here, and I know something 15 feet high, just below that 16, will come to that level. I'm gonna kind of cheat a little bit.
maybe my screen stuff is smaller here. Maybe these are like my little John shrubs, the Slim Jim shrubs in the back. So I have my screening shrubs along there that are smaller. Um, in the back, I need eight feet back here. So what I can do is bring this eight feet over here. And then I can carry this line back. I have to kind of carry it over to the side and intercept it. So what I do is I bring it up here. I bring one of these, these dots over where these small screening shrubs are. And I can go up to the edge of this and intercept the eight feet high that I carried back to the vanishing point based on this little picture plane where I can accurately measure. So I can bring this over, I can grab it and say, okay, right here is eight feet high at that point in my grid. And then I can bring that line back over and I have my little shrub, shrubby back here. And that one gets kind of blocked out. Maybe there's a little lollipop shrubs. A hedge, it's like a little, a little hedge along the back. Okay. So, and then I can do the same thing if I'm going down, right? Again, this is the only place where I can accurately measure. So I am going to draw, take my one eighth inch scale and I'm going to go minus one because for my pool, my water line is gonna be minus one. First, I'm gonna draw my the outside edge of my pool in so you can see it starts right on the edge of the second row of squares a little bit over from this one, maybe about right there. Again, the, the areas that are parallel are not in kind of perspective with the vanishing point. It's when they go front to back that they vanish. So here's the start of my pool. It looks like it comes a little bit more than halfway over this, this square on my grid. So there's the front edge of my pool. Now I'm gonna set the back edge. So it's a little bit beyond this here. So a little bit beyond that square, right? I'm gonna bring that, I'm gonna pencil that in because this is gonna be in perspective. So this edge, it's right under that canopy of the tree. So right about here, come in. So first I'm gonna draw that, I'm gonna pencil that in first, and then I'm gonna point the side edges back to my vanishing point. And sometimes this is where your brain kind of plays tricks on you with these, these vanishing points, is you just kind of have to trust the method and not overthink it. So I'm gonna bring that back to about where the edge of the pool lies. Again, here, my vanishing point to get this other edge of the pool. I'm gonna bring it back about where it lies. And now I can grab that, the relevant piece of the back edge of that pool. So there's the kind of edge, the shape of my pool in perspective. And now I wanna set the water line, which is about a foot lower. So I can measure a foot lower over here. I can draw it, kind of rough it in, all right, so there's about a foot lower, and I can kind of I can kind of grab that, or I can look at that and say, okay, I see how it's going to work. I could either come over here and, and grab that line and drop it down, but I'm just going to I'm going to use that how it looks as a guideline and carry it over to me. All right, so there's my water line of the pool. Here, 
And then here, it would just be a little bit lower than this edge, right, in parallel. We're not in perspective there. So that would be my water line sitting a little bit lower. And if that's come up, that detail part you know, the end. Last thing, let's see. Let's see. Um, you know, there's looks like there's hardscape that comes right along here. So it comes right up here. This area is hardscape. And even a little line that comes right here. Put one of those in. I could divide this up. Or again, always front to back, I'm always going with that vanishing point, right? So I'm lining things up here. I pick up my little squares of my patio. Side to side, it's parallel, does not need to be vanishing. Here's kind of an edge of hardscape over here. It looks like it wraps the pool and it comes off the edge of the pool here. So I could color that in if I had pen. Make this a little bit easier for you to see. And then this in. We'll get a couple different colors of hardscape here. So you guys can kind of see where things are stopping and starting. Right. Right. There's a little second color of hardscape. Water in here for my pool. Now the gazebo is pretty pretty hidden by the trees, I think. Maybe not. Maybe we see a corner over here. Check out our gazebo. The gazebo is, I believe, eight feet high. Eight feet high. All right. So well, let's plunk him down. So he he will have a little bit visible, not a whole lot. So over here. Goes a little bit further here. You can see I'm just kind of setting up his square. So at this point, he's eight feet high. This would be the, where the front post is, which is going to kind of block everything out. Just going to pick up a little edge of him right behind this. Again, front front piece of this um, square is mostly blocked by the tree. Let's say there's a little post and just a little corner of the roof coming behind that that tree. So you really can't see much of it. It's mostly blocked. So you're locked out with our 25 foot grid. We've got grass in a lot of areas with just some, looks like some shrubs. There's another little patio area over here. Again, using my vanishing point to set the edges that fade back. Coming about, not all the way there. Okay. It's over here. Section of patio there. 
put a little score in there if I wanted to. Again, front to back, so I'm using that vanishing point. See, that's my light color paving. Right along this edge. Right about this dividing line. You see this on your plan? There's a, a split in the hardscape which goes into this planter area. So we're going to carry that back. That's the edge of our lawn to the vanishing point. Right. Looks like it goes all the way back to the gazebo. So we've got lawn along there and then along back right in front of these shrubs. Our lawn is over here. And then kind of comes back a little bit over from this um, edge over here. Something like this. Right. And so this part is lawn. This part goes all the way over here. Lawn. Now I could say this is kind of a bigger ground cover over here. Some texture on that. I can bring that right up to the edge of that. Same over here. Adding a bit of an understory. Evergreen tree. Maybe these are some fall colored trees. Right, and we have a quick, easy perspective. Well, maybe not so easy. I'm going to zoom in on this for you guys so you can see it, and hopefully you can kind of follow through step by step, and you might have to replay it a few times, and that's okay. And it's okay if you don't get it the first time because um, it's, it's a tricky skill. All right, so perspective 101, we'll call it. Again, I think this 12 step method is my favorite one. Again, starting with framing your plan area, projecting down the line, creating that grid, projecting down the line, setting your elevation. So we are we did what's called a bird's eye elevation. So we're high up in the ground. Um, so that you got lucky because we blocked that gazebo right out. Had we been down at a worm's eye view or even uh, a, you know, a human eye view, you would have seen more of that. So sometimes we, we set these strategically. I just find when students are learning, if we set it as a bird's eye view, it tends to open this grid up nicely so that you can see what you're doing. If, it was, if we set this lower, this grid, grid gets a lot flatter and it gets much more difficult to tell where, how to place each thing. Again, added some colors, 
in, in an office, we would create the grid and we would rough in our tree locations and then we would do a series of overlays. So we get this really refined looking uh, perspective at the end. All right, so that is it, you guys. Good luck with this one. It is a challenge, but hang in there. I know you can do it.